Hey guys, so this is Quarantine Chats. Um, this week's episode includes my brother. It's the first one of the series. Um, look, I don't know how long this is going to last. It's really enjoyable after this first episode. But really invigorated and really loving where this is going to go. Um, it's a bit of a long chat. Uh, we talk about teaching, life, how it's affected, and the work world. So if that's something you're looking for to do, uh, continue watching the video. Don't forget to get, hit that notification bell and get notified when I do um, upload. Also, all my socials are linked down below. And I hope you enjoy the video and the chat. Um, and there'll be more of these coming on Sundays and obviously the regular videos on Fridays. But yeah, enjoy. Okay, so I said, as I said, we're going to do some quarantine chats. And um, this is my brother on the left or right. I don't know which just going to record. <laughs> um, but this is my brother, William. Um, he's a teacher. So if you just want to introduce yourself, William. Hi, how are you doing? Um, um, so I'm, I'm, uh, my name is William. Um, obviously, Stephen's brother. Uh, I'm a teacher in Arklow at the moment, um, so it's, it's just give an idea maybe of, of, of what it's like for a teacher. Yeah, it's obviously like I'm currently unemployed right now, so I'm living the life where you're trying to obviously do classes. So I have written down a few questions, as I said to you before we started recording this, um, and we're also going to chat about it. So I just want to ask you how you're doing today, look you're my brother, so obviously we tend, tend to have a love-hate relationship, but obviously these are trying times. How are you today? Yeah, good. Um, as you said yourself, like kind of day to day, it can be different. Like it's, you can get when you can do your exercise, but like uh, for a person, I kind of, I'm someone who really likes routine. So um, having no real routine, like po bar staying inside is, is difficult some days, but no, it's a good day to day. Made nice some nice food this evening, so I'm like happy enough. Went for a bit of a walk as well. You know, no, I get that. Obviously, I was that's one thing I did mention. Obviously, in the video that I put there on Friday, and I was thinking about ones that I have had thought about. I might ask you the same question as well. Obviously, being in this situation has completely took your routine out of place. Um, you're still working, and you, as you've mentioned to me and their parents, that you're under a lot more pressure and you have a lot more work. Obviously, I've had time now to think, or I didn't before because it was constant go, go, go. How do you feel that, that that's affecting you now? Because obviously you have a lot more work because you're, you don't really have, you're working from home. Obviously, I hope you're doing it one part and you move from work for here and home is there, that kind of thing. Um, but how, how are you feeling the like work life balance? Um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that it, it does, has definitely changed up. And I did, I said it to yourself and I said it to mom. Uh, it's completely different. But I suppose as the longer it goes on, I'm getting more used to this situation. I do think it probably is taking me a little bit longer to get ready um, for the classes because it means I'm sharing stuff online. I, I wouldn't call myself anyway tech savvy, so I was kind of having to adjust to that yeah. as well. Like I, I've been, I'm capable on iPads. I've taught with iPads before and I'm using a laptop this time. But just getting used to teaching online is different too and and, and making sure that your students are engaged. So it is completely different. With regards to work-life balance, um, the longer it's gone on, the better I've got. Uh, at first, I was spending a lot of time preparing for class. Um, not that I don't prepare when we're in a classroom, it's just changed the point of view mm -hmm. that when you're getting ready for class uh, in school, you've, you've a lot of the stuff set up um, that the day before and whereas i spent a lot of at first i spent a lot of evenings trying to write up um questions and then trying to think about how i could engage the students as well because it's very easy on something like this just become a lecturer uh, and yeah for kids that doesn't really work out you, you kids will sit there <laughs> especially the younger kids will sit there you know if they don't know the answers they'd rather sit there quietly than maybe bring it up it's the very uh, there isn't that very many individuals like to be able to to come across like and say sorry i don't really get that like you kind of a lot of the time have to get it out of them and it's a bit easier when they're in front of you in a classroom you can see their face mm -hmm. whereas obviously because of the gdpr situation and uh, none of their faces are showing when you're teaching them like um, oh. you can hear their voice and it also brings in the situation, and not necessarily GDPR, but the whole uh, using something like Zoom or, or Teams or whatever. Mm. They they talk they talk over it, so recording stuff and everything comes into it all, after all this whole GDPR 
issue too. Look, so it's it, it's completely as a teacher, like oh, I think that's your life, life, life like you have. have. Sorry. So it would have like GDPR is not something you would have taught of really been a teacher in the school set. And yes, there was things you couldn't do and say in social media, but the fact that you now have to think, obviously me working in retail or working for large corporate companies and um, working in offices, obviously GDPR is the main thing that is pushed, but obviously being a teacher, yes, look, you have your work-life balance, as in like you shouldn't be friends with students outside of school, that kind of thing, Facebook, that kind of stuff, share personal information, but obviously then bringing Zoom and Teams into it, that's brought a whole other aspect into teaching as well. like. The technology side of it, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose like with GDPR, did come in with, tea, with with schools as well, and it's changed up. Obviously, the availability of your own information, like mm. even with regards to leaving cert results last year, is a perfect example of it that they've made it uh, available online for people to view their scripts. Uh, before it used to be quite a difficult process to go through to get to see your script anyway. Like, yeah, remember um, myself. Like, if you write the information, it's yours, so you can you are allowed to ask for that information. Like that's where the GDPR was big in teaching. Whereas now, as you said, it's it's gone over to the idea of Zoom or um, and them not being uh, shown on cameras and and information being recorded and stuff like that. So uh, there's 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 legal side to it, but it, it's 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 different in in so many different ways for both the kids and for the teachers. Like and. I suppose with, with teachers, I'm kind of lucky because I'm young enough in the mm. point of view that I mightn't be quite as tech savvy as you are, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not illiterate either in the point of view that, like, I know what, when we started off in our school, like, we, some people were just emailing, but uh, we've got to the stage now where the vast majority of teachers are using Teams and are teaching over that, and people are getting better at using teams and we're just having to adapt i suppose um yeah. i find it kind of difficult listening to some people and i think i think it's the well it's always said about teachers which are when at first start off people were, were taking the piss for centuries or just getting their holiday now it's just all easy for you if i at all and i and i say it to some of my teacher friends that are teachers the whole time i'd rather be back in the classroom it would be much easier for me to teach back in the classroom than it is to teach over um over teams like of, oh, of course like even i come like obviously i'm your little brother um but even from teaching and knowing how you do teach seeing yeah in the past obviously having like grinds and that kind of stuff in the house um like you have an ability to understand the kid and what they need like obviously that didn't work with us because we're siblings and it's like trying to teach something to walk that's never ever going to walk like it's it's challenging it's never going to work but which way like your students it was completely different so obviously you picked up on little things and someone was struggling with something but it wasn't going to say it right but then you're trying to do that over a call or a zoom and then obviously the technology side obviously since me and you've been in school it was all books obviously you mentioned that you talk over ipads and all like there's a difference then that like yes it was a big change, I suppose, I suppose, for schools and you as teachers. But it has schools have been edging towards having more stuff on, um, like iPads, computers, laptops for kids. For like, the likes of this situation, obviously, it wasn't. We didn't want a global pandemic. But in the other end, it's kind of yes, it has thrown the world up in in smoke at the moment, and everyone's kind of scared. But also, it has given the option uh, option people like me who've got back into doing YouTube and. Um, doing this series, obviously having chat chat um, with yourself as a teacher, looking into trying to see what I can do with the nurses because obviously your partner's a nurse as well, we've asked her, but there's a lot of kind of contracts that have been signed, you can't really speak out, and especially not in this kind of situation. But with, like, with the whole technology and like everyone has a phone, you know me, I, me and you are very the same, it's never really our hand, and then we give out to the kids, but who's better off in this situation? You see parents like our own mother, literally has planted an entire new garden because she doesn't know what to do because she had no other no anything else to do because she all she did was work and then she did her little hobbies and as you know yourself I get pictures every day <laughs> something else she's passionate and plant. Um but like it's the difference that where the kids have YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, just all that kind of stuff. So technology I suppose is helping on both ways and is a bad thing. But it, it is kind of and like we get to to our parents we get to chat about our parents together on whatsapp calls 
which is really lovely where you know yourself obviously you've been living at home you were over in Australia I don't tend to visit a lot but I contact my parents now most most days which is it's a, it's a nice thing like obviously this whole situation is very fucked up in, in a sense like but it has brought people together like we should have more we sort a load of shit out it's just that it's that kind of stuff um, and what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah like it, it does it's bringing out like it, sometimes it's bringing out tough situations for some people and other mm-hmm. people are adapting to it differently and, and I think I think from day to day it changes even from person to person. Like some people may be having a good day one day and a bad day another day. And like I think it's it's being able to understand yourself then that um you you can deal with the bad days. That's the biggest thing. I, I try to when I'm in school, like as much as uh, you were talking there about body language with the kids, you try to, 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 to become someone that's able to understand what they're saying well what well, by seeing it rather than by yeah. saying it to you. And I think um, that side is also taken away from it. Like, um, but regards to sort of like uh, you're talking about, mom there, mom has been busy out. Like, um, she's looking to keep herself busy. At times, I think I can kind of be. Uh, it's brought me a bit, bit lazier. And I, I understand what you're saying about YouTube, and that I would, I watch quite a lot of YouTube, and I'd like watch quite a, like a lot of Netflix and. And at, at times, you kind of think to yourself, are you making the the most use of Hmm. of the time especially when you could be off and doing like I don't know learn a new thing or doing something new now I've done if, if my challenge for me was to watch as much Netflix as possible well then maybe maybe I am going very well but um, I think setting yourself some sort of challenge and I think me myself and yourself have tried to go about doing that with our, our 1k run neither of us would be particularly athletic in the last few years, I would have said. I'd say if you had asked about six or seven years ago, I would have been yeah. pushing the first team of football and you were very, very strong and you would have done your different gymnastics and stuff like that and you'd been you'd doing much stronger even than I was at that stage. But I think as we've got a little bit older, we aren't quite as good. So I think our idea of doing the 1K run and you, I think you're doing... Um, squats and you're doing a challenge. Challenge, challenge as well so like i think setting some sort of goal for you to get to is, is good and uh, i think after talking with your partner killian as well like he we we i think as a as a as a group me yourself neve and um killian we we kind of have a good idea about how to go about setting reasonable goals and mm-hmm. trying to challenge each other I suppose is, is a good way I think me and you have come around that anyway I know Killian is quite good at getting himself motivated anyway I think it helped for us too because motivation sometimes can be an issue that we have a challenge against each other it's nice to obviously I want to beat you and obviously you want to beat yeah. me like it's it's just it's just a brotherly thing like it's it's not going to change like yeah, like we, we have the, his office here, like, um, and obviously he works out every day. At the start of this, I was going on walks every day with him, but it, it is a motivation thing. Like, yes, I have set myself a 30 day challenge, and the fact that I'm recording it and there has to be footage there from every day, I could just lie and change an outfit and do that, but then I'm also lying to myself. Like, I, I wasn't able to do 100 push ups um, today or yesterday. That's because my body isn't able for it yet. So I'm pushing to a fail. I can do a hundred squats, but that's not because I've been able to. I've been standing and walking, and that's that's the kind of work I've done with it in the hospitality industry and retail. Like, so it's the fact that I'm motivating myself. But I've also found through the whole situation, which is really weird. I've always hated waking up early, and I now like clockwork every morning. Wake up at eight o'clock, unless I've been drinking the night before, and then I usually wake up at eight and fall asleep. But it's this fact, even through this whole thing, it's got me in this routine of waking up early and being okay to go to work. I think, uh, I think it's it's you you've done well obviously to do that. You you kind of get into times in your life where you get used to it and getting your body used to it. Like mm-hmm. as we said earlier on in the conversation, your body craves routine, and at the moment, routine can be a little bit more difficult to come by unless you make yourself into that routine. Like it's very very easy at the moment. For me, especially at a weekend there, I could lie into 12 o'clock if I wanted to, I suppose. Like, But you kind of do need to keep yourself in some sort of routine. Like, um, I think routine is, 
think as humans we crave routine like no matter yeah. what way you look at it like like i even think during the summer when i'm off as a teacher sometimes i find it difficult um to be constantly off it, You'd, you'd be looking for the challenge to go back to school again come September. Like um, now, obviously, there's only been a couple of summers where I've done that, and normally I work through the summer because mm. of the contracts I've been on. But it's it, it's something different, and then I think this quarantine has probably brought it out for more people too. And and I suppose we're kind of lucky. I know you've said you've got the money, and and you're we're kind of lucky in the point of view that there's at least someone in our house still working as well like so obviously me and Eve are working and Killian is still working so that's that's a uh, that's helpful too it must be I would imagine very stressful for some people and 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 something I think about quite a lot is it might be very very stressful some for some of my kids that I'm teaching like I don't know exactly what's going on in their house every day they come on to my class like there are two pa- two parents could easily have, have lost their job they could be struggling for money it, it it's I think quarantine, um, it's presented a lot of difficult situations for a lot of people. And I kind of, as much as I find it difficult mentally at times, um, I know that I've been quite lucky in the point of view that my job is still going. I'm still able to get paid and um, I can work from there. And, 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 and there is always these opportunities to, I suppose, to get out and to enjoy the fresh air too in a reasonable distance you're home like and, and that can be a good for you mentally as well i think a lot of it does come down to that like yeah no definitely like even for ourselves like look our own home life like that kind of situation you don't know what's going on home like even myself in the situation yes killian is working and that's the best thing ever he's actually just got a promotion and got a pay increase and even in this time there was just stuff that was coming like but even myself i found it hard when I, because I was in between changing jobs and unfortunately the second company that I left my brilliant amazing yeah, job with Dyson for, um, I hadn't done my induction. So I was told by the company, look, we're still looking to employ you, but it's just not happening anytime soon. And then obviously with the most recent thing, we're obviously in quarantine for the next four weeks. Obviously the the um, level of uh, kilometers you can travel is has been raised to five and that kind of thing. But even like we, at the start, I wasn't okay with being off because um, I am so used to uh, being in a routine. And my routine was going to work, get, getting up, going to work, having a smoke, getting my bus, which was two buses into town, getting to work, having a smoke, having a chat with the girls, but not dealing with anything going on up here. And I was coming home, having dinner with Killian, watching TV, having uh, some stupid argument over nothing and not dealing with anything. So it's given us a lot of time, I suppose, as a couple to sit down and think like, oh, fuck, are we doing this um, the, the right way? Like, are we just tiptoeing around? And it's given me a different outlook on life, obviously, like, you know, from my own personal issues over the last year. Or so I've had a lot of time to think about a lot of things. Like, obviously, this quarantine, it's spurred me to do this. Um start this series up, get back into my YouTube, not be afraid of fear. Um, but then it all turns around to the fact that I always think as well, I'm lucky to be in this house right now. We're lucky to be in a situation where not everyone has that either. As you've mentioned with the kids every day that you see, you don't have, like obviously it is GDBR that the camera can't be on, but if the camera was on, you might know it was something but, and that kind of thing. But obviously you can hear the kids and then you're trying to figure out, obviously because you're a teacher and you're a caring person, is there anything going on like in their life? Because obviously it's stressful for me and you. How is it going to be for a kid who's growing up in this time? Like obviously when we grew up with it, a completely different time from <laughs> never mind the pandemic for but when now like it's just yeah, it's, it's like, very it's very it's a very unusual situation of fairness. Like it, it, something that's happened that hasn't happened like in a hundred years, like it's it, it, like there's no point going on every 10 years or something used to deal in with it's just something that even if you think of someone like our granny wouldn't remember and she's been she's went she's lived through world war ii like so like, everything in the world. How, how long yeah well like how 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 long ago was that like and 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 yet she would never have really seen that in the same scale as this like in, no and she has been terrified as well like. completely yeah it's a completely unusual situation in general anyway and i think i think if anything as we're slowly adapting to it as much as we can 
And I think it'll probably be over. And I'm hoping that there isn't a, a rego that I could hopefully be over and done before we have to adapt completely to it. That mm. we can go back to our usual situation. And then hopefully for yourself, it means getting back into work. And obviously, it's good to have um, use the time, whether it be for your mental health or your physical health to improve it or whatever that might be. Um, it is nice to get back into work too. Like, and um, I think as humans, even though we mightn't say it like uh, too often, we do really crave the routine. Like, oh, definitely. And I think that's what quite a few times as we mentioned in in this chat. We should like it's the one thing that yes, I do have a routine every day. And you, as you mentioned earlier as well, some days like this week, I was just like ugh. And then it was on Friday, like I was, I was trying to record the video for Friday on Thursday and I just couldn't do it because I couldn't think of something. I was like, ah, oh, what are people going to watch? Because I have people I watch on YouTube that are people I've watched for 10 years. I've been on here for 10 years and I ha- held myself to this higher standard. And then I just sat down and I was like, well, what, why do I need to do that? Like sit down, grab a cup of tea and have a chat. And that's what I did. Now, obviously, like, there's audio issues. That's because I'm trying to get my weight for my camera. This is all coming off my phone. I'm using this laptop. So I'm trying to better myself, obviously, by getting new things. I'm finding like, my love for drag has always been there, but I'm, I'm now in a monetary area where I can actually spend money to do that. And I had the time to learn and try these new things, obviously. Obviously, YouTube, you know, all my life. I just released all my videos last night that had up years ago that I private because I was afraid of people finding them and I just said it to Kayleen last night I was like but why am I afraid of people finding them it's something I did for two years of recording my life every day no no one cares what I did when I was 15 but it's it's history I shouldn't have hit it like so it's it's opened up a lot of things for me and like having the routine of getting up a day every day and trying to be creative and thinking of ideas but also being real as well that's why I think this series Obviously, my housemate gave me the hilarious name for a quarantine, and I was like, "You've a lot of people who are in different places, and like you could have a chat, even people within the queer community in this situation. It's just to have a conversation with people, and it's interesting. Like, when's the last time me and you sat down and had a chat like this? But that's the fact as well. Like, probably, I'd say like a, a long conversation like this, probably last time one and two of us were probably drunk together and one rang the other, like I'd, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's not that we don't talk to each other over the phone, it's just generally mum is in the phone call or dad is in the phone call or, or something is like... It, so I need help with some sort of phone. If, it's not as if we don't get on or anything like that. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just, I suppose you get, you fall into your... Um, your, your life. If I, if I'm at all, my when when I went to Australia, I probably was in contact with you more often in Australia than I was easily than the three or four years before that. Like, okay. um, I think when you're away, I think when you're away or you're not close to people, you do end up making that phone call more often, and the ability not to be able to get to them. I think when I was in Australia, you could see that I was making more phone calls to you and to mom and to dad and whoever. I think even quarantine has brought that in a little bit into into everyone else, even though we're all living in Ireland and you could technically get in your car, but it's not really worth it or to get the bus or whatever. It's not really worth it. The feeling of not being able to get there, I think also brings that out more, more in you. Well, I, I think anyway, just from my personal experience of being away and, and it being a, a, a bit different for me. Like, like I, I think um, living in Australia was unreal, but I would never live in Australia for the rest of my life uh, without everyone being there. Like I would live in, I, I would, I would take Melbourne and living in Melbourne, no problem in a second. But it was just over long term, was too far away from my family and too far away from my friends. Like I know this is getting a bit off topic when it comes to, but it gives you the idea of look how far away from people you can feel. Hmm. And even now with quarantine, like it does feel like you're far away from them, even though they're only an hour journey down the road for you to mom and dad. And it's only a 20 minute journey for me. But because you feel like the restriction is on you mm-hmm. and, and you want to be responsible, like too, you don't want to like, I know there's people that are traveling from Dublin down to Western and stuff like that, that aren't working. But I think I just feel responsible that, I wouldn't like to be the person to bring it and then for someone else's family to, to I don't know, to get the coronavirus and then someone's granny to die from it or something like that. I, I just feel responsible a, a, as a person too. Like, so 
I think I think it's a difficult time at the moment, but I think you have to try and make it the best of mm-hmm. that um, Yeah, even like in regards to like reaching out to other people, like all I wanna do is ring Lena, Roisin, you, Mom, Dad, obviously you can get in contact with Mom and Dad, no problem. Both of them are practically retirees at this stage. Uh, you're working, Roisin's working, she's um, a frontline nurse. So she's in a, oh, sorry, a nursing home, but she's in the front line. Same with Zoe. Um, Helena's working in accounting, and it's obviously a very stressful job working from home and working five days a week. But I'm off. Um, I learned very quickly that the world doesn't revolve around me <laughs> in this situation. Um, that no, people aren't going to always text back, and they aren't always going to be in the mood for a chat as well. That's one big thing I want to make out. Like, yes, ringing your parents every day is probably a good idea because they need someone to chat. There's not someone in the house to them or if they're alone or that kind of situation. Like, our mom is at home by herself because her partner's working. And um, dad's at home because it is a granny. And we all love granny, but, like, no one wants to talk to granny all day. <laughs> um, so we do have them conversations and keep them company. Like, I sat on the phone with mom for two hours the other day to show her how to buy a pair of shoes on Elleries. It was <laughs> torture to <two> hours. <laughs> She'll kill me for saying that. But it was, it was enjoyable. I was like... We would have done this in five minutes if we had sat beside each other, but it was, I was able to walk her through the different steps and I was like, are you sure you want them shoes and this is a return policy? And then the fact that like she enjoyed that and then also told me she was never going to online shop ever again. <laughs> but that's just because it's something different. And I think people are dealing with the stress very differently. Like, yes, um, I think that at the start it's like drank quite a lot. Um, and I have went through binges um, on and off as well. You know? but, I think it's it's kind of yes, the routine is something you need as well. But there's also you need your escapes, you need your alone time. Like obviously, I'm working all day. I have all day to myself, which sometimes is a really good thing, and sometimes it's not. Because sometimes you just sit there and think in your own head. Like, so I think it's just to be aware of yourself and aware of others is something like that. This is kind of you need to take away from this and like the whole situation that's going on, especially people who are frontline workers or teachers, because you are classified as a frontline worker. You are still working every day of the week to teach the kids. Yes, obviously, people may view that, no, you're not out getting sick, but you are teaching large numbers of classes online, doing all the work yourself. You don't have the support of the school. You don't have the support of the supplies of the school. Yes, obviously, you you probably have online things and there's chat boards and that kind of thing for teachers. Um... But it's just the difference of, obviously, I was working in retail. Um, so the company I was working for, Dyson, obviously, had pulled all their staff um, quite close near to, like, the 26th, end of May, like, kind of time, where other companies that I know were trying to go back to work this week, like, um, which is ju- it's just not a good idea. And I kind of, obviously, it's a little bit off topic. Obviously, not you've been a teacher, but what has this had any effect on you? I've had a look at now. Um, I was actually going to get a job after this um, and what I want to do. Obviously, I want to push, obviously, with the whole, you know yourself, I've always wanted to create content and do be a videographer and interview and that kind of thing. It's what, something I've always dreamed of. I've loved being on stage and that kind of stuff. You've always wanted to help and teach people. I've always wanted to help coach and do this. So if I can put them all in one, it would be the dream thing. But um, has the effect of like how the schools have um, supported teachers or not supported teachers has that changed your view on on companies or schools you've worked with like obviously mine has, my view has changed of a couple of companies that I've worked with because of how they have reacted to this and how they are reacting to it I think because I, I'm quite lucky in in the school I went to in Arclow like the staff is quite good um we would always have had email, like we'd been e- emails in and out between staff and, and management most days in school. Um, it mightn't be quite as technology technologically advanced maybe than some other schools I caught in, but it was they were definitely capable of starting the whole situation up. And I think in fairness to the management from the school, they backed us all the way in everything we were, were trying to do and provided us with lessons in in different ways to teach and like i, I can't really fault the, the the school at all that way i understand what you're saying that you're physically not there with them but i suppose it's as easy as me making a zoom call to the principal or to the other members of the maths department or whatever it might be if i need that help um yeah um i think I'll, I'll, the biggest thing about uh, with teaching um and the ability to talk to all the other staff is that you get ideas from from other teachers and 
actually just purely from going to college would have would be friends with teachers from from other schools and you get ideas and and you'd be surprised how easy it shares around and how how it changes how you do things and that I, even as in a few in a little while i have been teaching during the quarantine i probably changed up how i taught from the start towards how i t- teach now like mm. it, it's it, it, you were kind of as you learn you're getting better at it. and i think it will definitely be something that you can definitely bring back to your classroom and i think it will have brought on a lot of teachers i would imagine to improve their technological side within inside the classroom mm. i mean i can see my myself using that side of it i in regards to other jobs i i do understand what you're saying it, it's very difficult for it's very difficult for any um company like i obviously understand it's very very difficult for people getting let off but then it's also very difficult for the bars and for for the shops that aren't allowed to open to stay closed because they obviously still have the payments they have to make if they don't own premises maybe it's paying rent on the premises mm-hmm. you still have to pay the rent like you or you're pure lucky that you're your um, landlord or whoever owns the premises um, is, is letting you off. But in the vast majority, of places, yeah, that, like in vast majority of places, like you owe money and you have to pay it whether the money comes in or not. Like, and I'm afraid what it really like is going to do is a lot of business, smaller businesses will go out. Of, um, will probably go out of business, and I'm sure we. I think Ireland is a very resilient population. And so I think a lot of them people will come back in and might be the exact same business again, but they'll try to get themselves back on their feet again and like, go at it again. Yeah. Like if you're a person that owns a business, you don't just give up on it even when it goes. And, it, and I've, you see it with some people who, who just try their best to get going again. And I imagine that will be the way it will, will, will happen too. Like uh, obviously there'll be a lot of people looking for jobs and that will make the market for jobs um, more difficult, obviously, but um i can kind of see that 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 people are 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 doing well as you said to look after each other so i'm hoping that will at the moment so i'm hoping that will kind of continue on and and that jobs will become available and we won't end up with um, a really big unemployment rate again and i maybe i'm being a small bit optimistic with it but but i'd be hopeful like um with regards to jobs and uh, but I do agree going back too early would be a silly like and I don't want to end up back in the situation again like you have to think as businesses obviously you want to open but you want to open now for five weeks and then have to go again for another two mm-hmm. months three months like like there has to be that caught in it too like it's the it's the question of do I want the money now or uh, and get hit again later or is it better to wait now and like it is a difficult, a difficult situation for businesses too. Like. Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, from from the different companies I have worked with, um, obviously working with Dyson it was, it was a dream job. It was amazing. Obviously, I was looking to move up, taking the next job. Even just seeing how how that company is working, um, it's difficult um, in situations. Obviously, I'm not going to say anything about a situation or that kind of stuff. I'm not that kind of person, but. Even with the government, uh, our cousin Natalie, I'm hoping to get her on here. She's an art teacher. Um, obviously, the arts is something like obviously education has been sort of supported by the government and that kind of stuff. But the arts is that kind of like the the media and obviously there's a lot of things that are like yes, a pub's going to close down, something's going to open up in front of it. Um, but like well, two things I want to say is obviously there is a lot of support. Yes, I'm getting supported by the government with the COVID uh, nineteen fund. They are paying these a subsidy amount a week. I was lucky to get that because of the situation. And I'm lucky because of the day I finished. Because if I had been a week later, I wouldn't have been allowed it. Mm. Um, because it would have looked like I had left my job. But I was actually changing jobs over. Obviously then, as I was mentioning about at the arts. Um, but also just in, re- in regards to like how... Com- obviously, it was going back to how companies are, are treating their staff and what they're doing. Is it like, do you think companies, corporate companies... Have been smart trying to make the money and go back, and they obviously then lose their staff, or have to do a f- another closure due to it. Is it being greedy, or is it a company just trying to obviously better themselves when it does come back? Like I know the company I was going to work for are doing online stuff and obviously pushing to get back, but obviously they want to keep their staff safe as well and are going by the government guidelines. 
But do you think do you think people some some companies are being greedy, or do you think it's just it's gonna someone's gonna have to go back first, someone has to penny has to drop first? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think companies are companies. Like you'll you'll get um, you get people who really are trying to push it, like as in they're losing they lose their staff. Like uh, like a lot of bars have had to get rid of their staff. They obviously intend on taking the staff back again. Mm-hmm. But currently, they're on the they'll be on the COVID payment. Like um, mm-hmm. I, I can understand from this two point both points of view. Like. Um, I think some companies will probably take advantage of it. Um, I think that happens in every situation similar to this, like no matter what kind of like difficult the situation is. Like, I think companies will always and bosses will always try to make a bit more on it if they can, or or save a bit from losing. Like, um, mm-hmm. it's difficult to be annoyed at the vast majority of them. Like, I don't know. Oh, I know I'm talking about pubs again here, but it's difficult to keep on someone working that that you know won't be there for two months like and paying them when you will be already paying rent and you've no money coming in like yeah i suppose it does, it does hit the smaller businesses more i think you might be long in a pub when you i am as well it's okay <laughs> um mm-hmm. yeah obviously smaller business obviously look what you think on the other end i think some corporate companies are been very greedy and um, look, we've talked a lot about that situation. One other thing um, I was going to say, if I can think of it now, it came back to me twice and I've lost it again. Um, now it's gone again. Um, but what do you think, as I mentioned earlier with Natalie, uh, about the arts not being supported? How, how does that make you feel? Obviously, you're a teacher, so you are kind of in that kind of area. How do you feel, obviously, Natalie, obviously, as an art teacher? So if she's coming from the end of it, like the kids can't really be taught leaving her junior start level to do their stuff at home because it's in school, that kind of stuff. Do you feel that they are end of school and the kind of more hand-on, so the manual and stuff like woodwork that is being supported in teaching? As much as I suppose it can be, but it's difficult for project-based uh, continuous assessment because obviously you need to be in the class, you need to have the equipment whether it be a paintbrush in, in, in Natalie's art class or whether it be um, a bandsaw in, in a wood, woodwork or metalwork class, whatever it might be. like, it's, it's a difficult one. And just in general for the arts, obviously, it's a difficult situation for them to find themselves in. Like, it's, it, it, look, it's not easy for anyone. And um, I don't think anyone is really going to come out with this hire the people that are selling loads of masks and sand, hand sanitizer w- w- making massive money like you can see like if you just look at the stock exchange how much it's dropped in a few months like like well, we're heading for another recession it's just how we deal with it and come over hopefully especially um, the oil prices yeah well look at the, it's it, just the way it's gone it it does show you i suppose it's probably a little bit off topic but we've stopped uh, our, well, we've reduced our pollution levels and the ozone over the Arctic has more or less closed up and um, no matter what country you look over, the, the levels of pollution have been reduced. Like um, it, it's, it's kind of funny with the different things that are coming from, obviously the stock exchange is down, but the pollution is also down. And I just know, it, it, it's a, it's, it, in Italy, like yeah it's very it's a very unusual situation and and then so many countries are are dealing with it differently too so like it's like what what might happen in ireland and might necessarily be happening even in even in 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 the uk never mind and somewhere like america or italy or china or wherever that may be like yeah seeing all I, the I, across the beaches is terrifying yeah it's look at it's an unusual it's an unusual situation it has its unusual problems and you just try to try your best, I suppose, to whatever whatever side of it to, to to get the best out of it as much as you can, and and I suppose to come out of it in as a positive a situation as you can. I suppose you'd be hoping anyway. You don't want to. It is a it's a case where people could maybe struggle mentally in, and and you kind of just have to try your best and be as resilient as a person as you can. Like, I think that's. 
if that was to happen for everyone, I'd be happy with regards to the situation. But it's it's obviously it's, it's like asking for world peace. You're it's unlikely to happen as well. But like, yeah, it's something you'd like to see that people people deal with are able to deal with it and get out of it and hopefully get back working and stuff. But. Definitely not. That was the one other point I just remember there, and I was trying to write down before I forgot it again. Do you think I, I myself, I was even mentioning to mom and dad as well, uh, and Killian and a couple other people. I think there's going to be uh, high rate people leaving jobs that were dead end for them, and because they have had time later, they were laid off, and they realised that that job wasn't for them, or they not don't want to work full time. Like obviously, Killian's working from home. I think working from home is obviously going to be an option in quite a lot of companies now. Whether you do three days in office, two days home. Obviously, office space that works, you can't do that. With you. you can't be like, I'm not coming in on Friday. I'm not doing classes. We're doing Zoom calls. Not available on Yeah. Now, unless like there was a situation where you couldn't make it in because there was an accident or snow. So like snow, uh, this is obviously going to teach and change teaching as well. Like to go back to the teaching end of it during the snow kind of times. Now that you have the technology kids aren't really going to get that say if there's a big snow in and they can't get to school these are going to be able to teach them from home so i suppose you know, the pandemic yeah. has really given you a kind of thing there that you're not going to miss out because people are like oh they're going to miss out they're going to have to make the time back and can't put the kids back in school that kind of situation so it has yeah, it, hopes to this look it seems like it'll be unlikely that we'll have a situation where teachers would ever have to go back in the summer to make up time exactly. because no matter what the situation is now like bar mass uh internet down like, G-murders down. All. like i suppose could happen would be more likely to happen anyway with uh snowstorms and stuff like that because like well, our school even though i teach in, in, a, in a town like in a reasonably big town a lot of the kids actually travel from outside the town into uh, school um it's it's a situation where I'm not really sure. It's it's obviously a good thing. It is a good thing, like oh. how, how we adapt to it in, in bits. Um, what were you exactly asking me then before that? There was a you had a question for me. What was the? Um, do you think people are gonna think about the situation? Like obviously, say if we're going platonic here, a uh, man born married, four kids, um, the husband's uh, away at work five days a week, seven days a week he's actually working because he's jumped up at home. Do you think you, there's going to be a, a big influence of people either leaving dead end jobs or just in because it's good money and it pays the mortgage and are probably going to go for their passion because maybe they've had time off to think about what they want to do or they see that they have missed out on so much with their kids. Obviously, look, me or yourself don't have kids, so it's a different situation. But uh, how do you think, or do you think, obviously, if you take kids out of the situation, do you think there will be a high level of people leaving jobs that they're just in because it's good money, but they're not happy and they're not enjoying themselves? Um, I think the idea will be in lots of people's heads and maybe it will open it up for them to um, make that like a medium-term goal I'd imagine a short-term goal, though, will even if they are in jobs they dislike, will be get to back to work mm-hmm. if they're currently only getting paid by the the government um, fund. Like, um, I would imagine most people would be making would be taking a fair hit um, on a three hundred and fifty euro a week wage. Like a lot, a lot of people would make a good bit more than that. Um, <laughs> but it, it's understandable. You no, know, but it's understandable to the point of view that people will probably see it as an opportunity but i think i think you're seeing it as people just leaving straight up i think because of the situation it will probably become a medium term goal maybe yeah. a year down the line or something like that i think it probably will open up into other people into people's heads and maybe adapting their lives to do something that they prefer to do or to as you said to spend more time with their kids or whatever it might be that they've found that this situation has brought about i imagine i imagine there will be an uptake i don't know if it'll be as dramatic as maybe we would think it would be a lot of these things a lot of these things like you get out you're back working for three or four months like and money's coming in and you can kind of fall back into yeah into routine like i think i think it will see some increase like in, in, in people changing yes but i don't think it'll be as dramatic as people would 
would have thought it would be when you have had so much time to think and realize where you are in life and whatever like I mean, like I definitely myself have done a lot of thinking about that because look I know you're in a job you want to be in and you're doing what you love you love teaching and obviously your partner needs is obviously a nurse as well and she loves you in that it's at this time obviously it's a, it's a scary time for her to be a nurse Obviously, look, you, you know, my, me and yourself have been working for a very long time. We both started working at 15. I've had so many different jobs over the years. Like, I was always working for someone else. I was always working for the man, as mom and dad was always say. Um, so I think it's, it's given me a lot of time to think, yes, obviously, the job I was going into was going to be management. I was going to be coaching, and that's how I wanted to help people. Well, thinking about, like, uh, obviously, the reason that I asked that question is because it's something I've been thinking about. I don't know if I'd be happy in that job now because I've had so much time to think and I'm like, is money worth it? Obviously, I know I can save up enough in this situation and if this YouTube and kind of thing is something I want to go for, if it's not even YouTube, if it's something along the lines of that in media is something I want to do, why have I never given myself that push? And I suppose I've found the motivation now because I've had the time to think where I've always been, oh, well, I'll do that if I ever get time and never, ever got time. The time was there, I just never utilised it. I, slept, drank, lived life because it was the day to seize but obviously I suppose having a plan or thinking about things does really help. Yeah I suppose you you, you do get into thinking about it like I do think you probably would suit um, coaching job and you'd be quite good at it like you're quite confident in yourself but I also think that if it's something you want to follow follow it like um if it's YouTube, obviously, I, I know I know I've seen plenty of YouTubers who continue to work and and then they, as they get bigger on the platform, they obviously mm. then head towards and more towards YouTube. But if it was something that she wanted to do a course, and I suppose it just means maybe taking time out, if it means doing a, a full time course or maybe even doing part time and night time courses like it. it I suppose for you, it's totally down to exactly what you want to do, and I think that will be the case for a lot of people. Yeah, because like obviously, go to work five days a week. Like no one wants to do it, but also like obviously people want to do it with their dream job. And I suppose I've always been scared to say that working in media is obviously you as a family, mommy and daddy, and you would have known that was all I wanted to do. But I was like obviously the end of like I love makeup and drag, and I hid that for so long. Like, and I only mentioned it in the videos the other day. Um, but I've even found myself while recording and obviously I'm having a conversation with you so I'm speaking quite openly and loudly even when with the videos and getting feedback off like huge, like we have YouTube groups in, in Ireland like um, but sometimes I come across obviously I'm very friendly and chatty in that regard but that I speak quite lowly obviously it's because I'm living in a shared house is the excuse I use but the fact that I'm nervous um, on camera and that kind of stuff obviously it's very relaxed and how to chat with you because my brother well, like in regards to interviews and that kind of stuff. So I suppose it's a learning curve as well, this whole situation, obviously. Um, I told you I was ready at like eight o'clock and it was what, quarter past nine when we got on this call. Like, so, you know, we're trying to be um, time sensitive, that kind of thing, I suppose, is something that you need to learn. But I think this, this whole situation has, um, has definitely made it better. Like, well, definitely for me. Yeah, like... Um... It's it's it, like I suppose it's how how you adapt to it. Um, you you could be going really well, but the next person mightn't be, and I suppose it's been there for them too. You're obviously uh, changing it up. Um, you're looking at changing yourself. Well, not necessarily change it, but but I suppose better in yourself, and and mm. that's great to see. Like. Um, I probably am trying. I'm not trying harder than as hard as I probably should be. At times, I think I'm. I take two steps forward and one step back when it comes to maybe fitness or even eating healthily. I'm sister. Is probably um, they're they're probably what I find find most difficult at the moment. Um, and getting yourself in and doing that and making yourself do it sometimes can be difficult but you're obviously you're you're finding this time like different to even what i'm finding it like as in you're you're reevaluating where exactly you are and how where you want to go and and whether it be just you or you and and, and killian um i 
I probably have an idea more more of a not necessarily more of a plan, but I've more of a sort of a set idea of where I'm going. So it's probably more shorter term things I'm looking or medium term things I would be looking at. Like I, I kind of have an idea of when I want to do this, when I want to do this. So we're just re reevaluating ourselves, at, I suppose, different levels more than that at all. Like, and I think it will be different from person to person too. Like, um, I mean, like. Uh, you said it earlier, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm a teacher, like so. I think I, I feel happy in the profession that I'm in. So I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go looking at changing up that. Like, um, to, to be honest, the biggest thing, the, I, the difference I have since when I was in my early twenties, and which I'd like to change would that would would be my fitness levels. I've, I've obviously reduced quite a lot. I still play sport and whatever, like, but just not the level I was able to when I was younger, like. Um, oh, I don't. Great. I don't know if I've pushed that on quite as much as I should have in the. And I think even a conversation like this would make you think even more about the two. Like, mm. um, yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely, it was definitely good to talk about it anyway. I think, I think, you'll probably get different ideas from the different people you bring in. I'll probably give you one side of it, but then I imagine Natalie, even who's still a teacher, will give you another side of it, and then, and the other people you get in, I imagine. So yeah, I think I, I think it, I think it's a really good idea to get the point of view from different people as well, though. Like it, and people, your your viewers, then obviously get to see uh, um, maybe several different other people's sides of it. Maybe they're thinking. And one thing and then they listen to me and you and just they go oh okay and then maybe they hear, hear Natalie and maybe Natalie's closer to what they thought like so I think everyone will I think and I think it's a really good idea to, to, of, of talking with a couple of different people getting an idea of what, where where everyone is in, in such an unusual situation because like obviously you're a teacher but does it mean that like you're Thoughts are what every teacher thinks. Like as as you mentioned, because like, there's like about five or six to be used that are in the group. So we never mentioned family, uh, or we never, never mentioned teaching in that family chat anymore. He's all fire off. I know definitely. Look, it's been a very um, interesting chat with you. Um, I'm gonna ask you to, to tell my subscribers that it's seven people watching you, mom and dad, and whoever else watches. Um, so obviously, look, guys, this is a chat. It's gonna be someone different each week. Obviously, my brother's been here. This week has been very, very enjoyable and it's got the cogs going in my head and his head, I think. Um, obviously, the whole fitness situation, he's mentioned that I used to do bloody aerial silks when I lived at home and I am a hard set walking up my stairs. Uh, I quit smoking a month ago and I still can't walk up in bloody stairs. Um, but the situation is um, obviously something I used to talk about somewhere we could have a chat and see different people's perspectives on life and how they're dealing with the situation. So obviously you can drop a comment down below, um, subscribe, hit that bell so you get a notification. So you'll know what I'm posting, obviously it's two times a week. At the moment it is Friday and Sunday. I might be changing that up, depends, you know, trying to get that algorithm. Um, look, I hope you enjoyed this. It's going to be here every Sunday. Hopefully I'll have a new guest each week. Might even have my partner, Killian, on, obviously he works from home, so that would be a very good idea as well, I think. What would you think, William? Yeah, it gives, it, it gives a different perspective, like from, like for his company as well, a multinational mm. company, a different side of it. Um, but I think, uh, I think the algorithm, it's all about likes on the algorithm at the moment, so everyone get liking. So if you're viewing, you're liking. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it was great to have a chat and really enjoyed it. Perfect, thanks, William. Look, I'll have a chat to you soon. I'm obviously, guys, look, all my social media is linked down below. I'm on Instagram, Twitter. It's all I do in my life. I'm unemployed now. Um, obviously, I'll link William's Instagram and Twitter if he's okay with that. Obviously, you've been a teacher. It's a bit weird, so I don't know because it's shit so much. <laughs> um, but yeah. Possibly, okay. No problem. All right, look, guys, I hope you enjoy and chat to you next week.